Good morning. Praise the Lord. Let's go Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We're so honored and thankful, Lord. We're able to come and fellowship your presence and hear your word. Thank you, Lord, for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who saved us, who delivered us, who redeemed us, who gave us everlasting, eternal, abundant life. We thank you, Father God, for that. Lord, pray for our nation. You said in your word, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, giving thanks be made for all men, for kings, for all authority and over us. So, Lord, we pray for our leaders, Lord, each one of them hearken to you in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father God, for we speak peace to our country, we decree and declare a nation's righteous nation. We thank you, Father God, for all the nations of the world, that every nation opens up their borders and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. The labors are being sent in there. We speak peace and protection, Lord, to, to Israel, Lord, and Jerusalem in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the missionaries out there, Lord, preaching Jesus Christ, Lord. Thank you, Lord, protect them, meeting all their needs in abundance. And Lord, pray for all the body of Christ. Each every believer become baptized in the Holy Spirit, be taught about who they are in Christ, and going forth in this life, ruling and reigning. And Father God, I thank you, for, Lord, for anointing me today. That will be able to say and do what you have, you'd have me say and do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me an Holy Ghost. And I pray, follow us, Lord, as we hear your word and hear the Holy Ghost. We'll go forth and become doers of your word, led by the Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if you have your Bibles, let's look at our Bibles over here at the book of Romans, please. And we'll go to Romans chapter 4. Now, the scripture says here, this is about the, the testimony we have about Abraham and Sarah, how they believe God for this miracle baby. Now, the scripture says here, beginning of verse 17, as it's written, I have made thee the father of my nation before him whom believe, even God who quickened the dead. Now, how does, that, how does he do this? And calleth those things which be not as though they were. One translation said, God speaks of things that don't exist as though they do exist. In fact, that's how the earth was made and the planets. Is God spoke them in existence, according to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. And when we read Genesis chapter 1, we see that God said, light be, and there was light. Well, this is how we go in this uh, uh, rule and reign in this life as believers over circumstances. Remember, Jesus taught us there in Luke chapter 17, verse 6. He said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say in a sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, be thou planted to see, and it should obey you. So you see here that these things in this world are supposed to obey us. We see Jesus there in Mark chapter 4 when he said in verse 35, let us go pass over the side. And what, what he went, he went a hind part of the hinder part of the ship, sleep on a pillow. The storm came up, and the disciples came and woke him up and said, Carest thou not to be perished. And what did Jesus do? He spoke to the wind and spoke to the waves, and it calmed down. And then, you know, reprimanded his disciples because they didn't do this. We've been given authority ever since Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28. And the church, the body of Christ, we're all supposed to speak the same thing. If we'd speak our covenant and what the word says, like David did when he faced his problem. He's coming in the name of the Lord God of Israel. He's, he's coming because he has a covenant against uh, in his life that belongs to him, benefits. That's how he's coming against Goliath, his problem he's got. Now, his brothers, David's brothers didn't do that, nor did King Saul. But we see here that what God does is he calls those, he calls those things that be not as though they were. And that's how we really get born again. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and verse 10, that if thou shalt confess to thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in the heart God has raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart man believe the righteous, and with the mouth confession made salvation. For whosoever calls the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now think about that verse 10 says, for, for, for the heart man believe the righteous, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So we confess Jesus Christ the Lord first, and then we have salvation. Now here, back here in this verse 17 again, it says, As is written, I have made thee the father of many nations, before him who believe, even God who quickened the dead. Now how does he do this? And calleth those things which be not as though they were. It goes on and says, Who against hope believed in hope that he, Abraham, might become the father of a nation, according to that was spoken, so shall thy seed be. So this is what Abraham has. He has, so shall thy seed be. This is what he's going to base his faith on. He's going to take his new name as Abraham, which means father of many nations. And by just saying his name, he's calling those things that be not as they were. He's saying, I'm the father of many nations. And Sarah, see, both of them, their bodies are dead. They can't have children. But what did they do? They believed God, what, what God said. They believed his word. And, you know, that'd be difficult on your, on your mind if it wasn't renewed to God's word and even on your emotions and flesh. And what would other people think? Well, when it comes to living by faith, sometimes it, other people don't understand what's going on with that. You know, they think, ah, I don't know about that. You know, over here in, uh, let's go here to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. You're not too far away. Hang on there in, in Romans, please. In 1, T in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, now verse 14 says, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them. 
neither can he know because they're they're spiritually discerned. See, the natural mind doesn't comprehend these things. That's why we need to always renew our mind in God's word. Now, here in Second Corinthians, just keep going right, please. In Second Corinthians, we read here. Now, the scripture says here in chapter four, in verse thirteen. We have the same spirit of faith, according to it is written, I believe, therefore have I spoken. We also believe, therefore speak. Now, verse 18 says, While we look not the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Chapter 5, verse 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. Now, please, let's go back here to this, Romans chapter 4. So what is Abraham going to do? He's going to follow God's example. And the Bible teaches in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2, we're to emulate God. Imitate God as, as children of God. Well, what does God do? He speaks of things that don't exist, though they do exist. Now, how do we do that and not be lying? We speak God's word. God's word is truth, not the circumstances. The word is truth. Jesus said, thy word is truth in John chapter 17, verse 17. That's what we say is what God's word says. Like when it comes to healing, by his stripes we're healed. That's what we say about our health. That himself, like Matthew 8, 17, says himself took our infirmities, bear our sicknesses. And First Peter 2, 24 says, by whose stripes ye were healed. Now, if we're going to side in with God, they're going to say what God's word says about us. I mean, once we confess Jesus Christ, Lord, we tell people we're saved. We tell people we're born again, especially when people come to witness to us about, you know, joining their religion. Well, I know I'm saved. I'm born again. I've received Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Now, what do we do? We're, we're saying what the word says. The Bible says we're saved when we do that. The Bible says we're born again when we do that. And that anything else the word of God says, that's what we say about the circumstance we're faced with in Jesus' name. We're saying what the word says. We're always right when we're in safe ground and steady ground when we're saying what the word says. We're not actually should ever let the word depart from our mouth when it comes to anything in life. And all of us seem to train ourselves this way to say what the word said. When Satan came to Jesus, and brought those temptations in Matthew chapter 4. Jesus said, it is written. He quoted verses of scripture. When it came time for Jesus to minister, he found the place it was written. And read there from Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 and 2. In Luke chapter 4, verse 18. So what's Jesus doing? He's always going to the word. He's always saying what the word says. And that's what we do. We, we do the same thing. The word of God says, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Once we receive Jesus, our Lord. The word says we're new creatures in Christ Jesus. The word says we're justified. The word says we're, we're righteous. Well, then that's what we say. Whether we feel righteous or not, whether that feel like or not, what do we think? You know, what, no matter what we think or what we feel, the word says once we receive Jesus, we're, we're holy. We're sanctified. And that's how God sees us. And that's what God says about us. And that's who we are. We are what his word says we are. What we want to do is renew our mind to God's word and begin to see that we're, we are what his word says we are. We can do what his word says we can do. We have what his word says we have. And so here in this Romans chapter four, again, in verse 17 says, as is written, I have made thee the father of my nation before him who believe, even God who quickened the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Again, one translation, God speaks of things that don't exist as though they do exist. And that's how they exist is by speaking, calling in, calling forth what we want in life. Calling in health and healing and protection in Jesus' name. Like the psalmist said, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress. In Psalm 107, the scripture said in verse 2, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And that's what David's doing when he's coming against Goliath. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of God? That's what David's letting him know that you can't do anything to me. I've got a covenant with God. Now, how did David get this kind of boasting and confidence and boldness? Well, as he took care of his dad's sheep, he's meditating on God's word, singing psalms and worshiping God. And this gets him built up. Apparently his brothers weren't. Apparently Saul wasn't. David talked different than them, yet they all had the same covenant. They all have the same benefits. But David took advantage of it. And as we meditate on God's word, keep our mind renewed to God's word, and keep our faith fed on God's word. Like Jesus said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word proceed out of the mouth of God. Then we got more confidence and more boldness. And remember, Hebrews said, cast not away, therefore, your confidence. We don't want to get rid of our confidence. Our confidence comes by spending time in God's word, uh, hearing it taught, meditating on it, especially meditating on promises, and praying in tongues. Jude said that we get built up when we pray in tongues. Build up yourself, most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And as we pray in the Spirit, if you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit and you're born again, ask God. 
and just say, Lord, I'm going to receive the infilling of your spirit. Jesus said, if you be natural, know how to, know how to give, good, give good, good, uh, good gifts to your children, how much more should your Father which have give them the Holy Ghost that, that ask? So, and just say, Lord, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit and have that hunger to want more of God. And so by praying in tongues and praying the Spirit, we get built up. We get edified, the Bible says. Edified means build up, charged up. And that's how we, we want to get charged up as believers and maintain and stay charged up. And not only that, but praying the Spirit's going to help us become much more sensitive to the Spirit of God, to the inward witness about what God wants us to do in life. Now, many people have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, but they haven't really taken the time to get themselves built up praying the Spirit. And we all need to do that. Every day, put time praying the Spirit. I mean, as you're doing errands and things, you can walk around, drive around, whatever, praying in tongues. While you're doing that, the Bible says we're building ourselves up. This is, what, this is the gift that God gave the church. He gave Jesus to the world, but he gave the church the infilling of the Spirit. And it's such a precious gift, you know. And again, it builds you up. See, so often people have been taught against it. But just like people are taught against being born again. You know, if you grew up in some Christian religion, you know, they may have strong feelings against being born again. And so anything else that we, you're going to receive from God, Satan's going to do all he can to get you concerned about it. Like, this can't be God. But was I'd have had this before. Well, that's not true. If it's, it's in the Word of God, it belongs to us. And being baptized in the Holy Spirit is a precious gift. It's going to help build. It's going to benefit you and help you be more effective to minister to other people. Now, what the scripture says here in Romans chapter 4 now, in verse 17, as is written, I have made thee the father of my nation, before him he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were. Now, how does God make things dead come alive? He speaks of things that don't exist as though they do exist. That's how Abraham's body is going to come alive. He's going to do the same thing. Abraham's going to call those things that be not as they were by just saying his name. And it's going to come cause his body to become alive. And Sarah's body's, uh, body's also. She's going to take her new name, and she did. Now that verse 18 says, Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of a nation, according to that was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Look at that, so shall thy seed be. That's what they're going by. That God said, I've made thee the father of many nations. Now it goes on and says here in verse 19, And being not weak in faith, he, Abraham, considered not his own body now dead, when he's about 100 years old, neither yet the dead to Sarah's womb. He staggered not the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what God had promised, God was able to perform. Now, what did Abraham do? He didn't consider his body being dead, nor Sarah's body. What did he consider? He considered what God said. He considered what the what the Word said, and what we that's what we do as believers. He went by what God said. And that's what we do as believers. We go by what God says. We keep saying what the Word says. And when it comes to healing, take the scriptures there in Isaiah fifty three four and five. Well, let's just read them. Let's go back over to Isaiah chapter fifty three. Now, the scripture says here in verse 4 and 5, Surely borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Those words are also sickness and disease and pains. Yet we did esteem and stricken smitten of God afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, that chastised our peace upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now, let's go over here to Matthew now. Matthew's going to refer to this by the Holy Spirit in Matthew chapter 8. Now, the scripture says in verse 16 and 17, When he was come, they brought un unto him many that was possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick, that it might fulfill what spoke by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself, took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. And let's jump over here to 1 Peter, like heading towards the book of Revelation, way over to your right. In 1 Peter chapter 2, now the scripture says here in verse 24, Who his own self bear our sins, his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unrighteous, by whose stripes you were healed. Now, see, those scriptures are telling us that Jesus did this for us. It's already been done. It belongs to us. And that's why we want to take advantage of that. Now, go back here, please, to Romans. In Romans chapter 4. Now, verse 19 now. And being Abraham, being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body. Now, what's Abraham considered? He's considered in the Word. So when things come to us, we're to consider, what does the Word say about this? If we don't know, we want to find out. And in the Word of God is promises. They're called exceedingly great and precious promises. That's what belongs to us in Christ Jesus. That's what God's will is for our life. I mean, many dear Christians are struggling today wondering what God's will is for my life. It's what, what did he promise us? What did he say we were? What did he say we have? Who did he say we are? That's his will for our life. That's what God wants us to have. He made it crystal clear from his word what he wants us to have in life and who we are. He wants us to enjoy life because Jesus came. We might have life number abundantly. 
He wants us to have good health because he wishes above all things that we prosper and be in health. That's what God wants us to have. But see, there's so many different opinions about what does God want you to have? As soon as some dear Christians go through some kind of trial, all kinds of people like Job Cumpers come to her, to her, him or her, to try to let them know the reason you've got this, the reason you're going through this, and begin to bring up some kind of weird thing about why they have this. In other words, it's always pointing and probably something wrong in your life. Well, when you look at the natural, you're never going to be perfect. But we are perfected in Christ Jesus. That's what we look at. It's who we are in Christ Jesus. And when the guilt and condemnation comes, we want to reject it. We refuse it. It's not from God. God doesn't condemn us, nor Jesus, nor the Holy Spirit. They're not condemning us. It's, it's people that come around that taught us wrong that gets us to bite into the con condemnation except it. Now, what did Abraham do? He began to call those things that be known as the word by just saying his name. And he kept giving glory unto God. This is how we keep our faith active. It's by just constantly praising God and thanking God for his word, what his word says. Father God, I thank you, Lord. My bills are paid in Jesus' name. Father God, I thank you that you wish above all things that I prosper and be in health, even though soul prosper. I thank you, Father God. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And you meet all my needs in abundance in Jesus' name. My cup runs over. Wealth and riches in my house. And I just want to praise you and thank you, Lord, for that in Jesus' name. And just continually do so. And that's how we keep our faith active keeping our mind on God's word, keeping our heart filled with God's word, always hearing the word every day, you know, keep ourselves built up the word. Read those promises, all of us. Start, start our day out with the promises of God and praising God and reading those scriptures and quoting those promises to ourselves. <clears throat> like that we just read there in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, Matthew 8, 17, 1 Peter 2, 24. They're excellent when it comes to knowing about healing and about health. And again, just keep praying in tongues every day. What's that going to do? It's going to help keep us build up. It's going to help us know about, about what we're, direction we're supposed to take in life. See, the Holy Spirit will lead us to this life. He dwells inside of each believer. And we need to learn to be led by an inward witness. You know, we all have emotions and have feelings. A lot of times we've made decisions in the past on those emotions and feelings and found out we got us, ourselves in a situation that we really miss God. No, we don't go by what we feel. It's not easy. Or go by our emotions. That's not easy. It's not easy on the flesh, definitely. But no, we go by what we have in our heart. What does the Lord want me to do? And we'll have that witness inside of our spirit. You know, the, the scripture says in, in 1 John 5, there's the witness of men and there's a witness of God. But the witness of God is greater. All of us have the inward witness. You, you used to hear a long time ago, you'd hear some, let's say a pastor, he'd say, be preaching or whatever. So, you know, uh, you know, how, we've been thinking about, you know, building on the Sunday school rooms. How many's got the witness? No one they ask it. Well, has anybody else in the church got the same witness that I got? And you hear people say, Amen. You know, sometimes people say, Let's just receive an offering right now and let's take care of this. Well, what are they doing? He's asking other people, you have the witness on this too. That witness is, is dwells inside of us. See, as, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For the, the Spirit of God beareth witness in our spirit that we are the children of God in Romans 4. Excuse me, Romans chapter 8, verse 14 and 15. So the Holy Spirit dwells inside of us to bear witness. And when it comes to making decisions in life, what do we have in our spirit? What do we have in our heart? Now, a lot of things in our head, we get, get a lot of good ideas in our head, even bad ideas. But what do we have in our heart? Our spirit. That's where the Holy Spirit dwells. And as believers, we're to be led by an inward witness. And people have plans for our life and what they want us to do. But what does the Lord want me to do? You know, maybe because your friends want to go on a cruise. Well, what do you have in your spirit? So you just jump on board on this thing, but find out, Lord, is this okay with you? Is this where you want me to do? Is this, is this okay with you that I do this? How are we going to know? Well, we're going to know by going by what we got in our spirit. And just spend time with God and pray. This is, again, where praying in tongues is so beneficial. Because praying in tongues is like the doorway, the gateway to the supernatural. It, it causes us to be much more sensitive as we get ourselves built up. And we get built up by praying in tongues. We get edified and charged up according to the scriptures. We get edified and charged up inside of our spirit. And we need to say that way and keep ourselves through it. Faith comes by hearing the word, but we get built up by praying the spirit. And God gave this to church so we would, could be bold and strong and confident in Jesus' name. Think about the benefits that Jesus bought and paid for and freely gave to us. And of course, this is every day by worshiping God and thanking God and praising God and showing God gratitude for what we appreciate that we have who we are in Christ Jesus. That's how we keep our faith active. 
You know, I used to wonder, what, what can I do once I give the faith decree or once I claim something or once I speak to the mountain, tell it to go, the problem, or pray the prayer of faith or pray the prayer of agreement? What, what could I do afterwards? You know, I prayed, I claimed it, I spoke to it in Jesus' name. Well, what can I do? I can begin to praise God. Let my request be made on Thanksgiving. Father God, I thank you. I have it in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. As it, when the doubt and unbelief comes to you that you're not going to get it, you don't have it, it's not going to come, right there is a good time to just start saying what the Word says. I prayed, I believed, I received it. Jesus said, therefore I say unto you, what things are bizarre when you pray, believe, receive, and share them. I prayed, I believe, I received it. And Father God, I want to thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. I got it. You said in your Word and begin to go back to what the Word says. If it's finances, then we have financial scriptures. If it's healing, we, we, we read some of the healing scriptures just then. Then use those healing scriptures and just keep thanking God and praising God. And what, what's that called? That's called fighting a good fight of faith by maintaining the faith. Now, back here about Abraham, you notice here in that verse 19 of Romans 4, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body. See, weak faith considers the circumstances. Strong faith considers what God says. Strong faith gives glory to God. Yeah, it gives glory to God that I have it in Jesus' name. And I, I prayed, I believed, I received, or someone prayed the prayer of agreement. We agreed in Jesus' name, I got the job in the name of Jesus. Now, what can we do? Just keep praising God and thanking God. I remember one time a, a Christian brother uh, um, asked me, to. he wanted to meet up with me. And so I told him, I was coming through an area there. We'll just meet in this bank parking lot. And so uh, he was, he was a, a police officer, a detective. And so I got in the car, and I'm not too sure what's going to be going on here, you know. It's not the first time I've been in a police car. But anyway, so uh, like one friend of mine said, uh, the police officer said to him, this is not your first time being in a police car, is it, Clifton? He said, well, it's the first time I've been in one and one handcuffed. <laughs> he's a pastor now, born again. Anyway, so I get in there, and you know, I'm not too sure what he's going to say, you know. Well, he says, I want to tell you something. They got this job that opened up in my state, and uh, I, I, a lot of people applied for it. And I just want you to know, I took Mark eleven twenty four, 24, and Jesus said, Therefore I say to you what things are bizarre when you pray, believe you see and you shall have them. And I prayed, and I believed I received this job. Now, he had, it's a kind of job that gets appointed by the governor, you know, someone that you got a connection with in politics. And I applied for it, and I just put everything, you know, put, I, I went through the physical and went through the test. And uh, they came back and said, well, we're going to start all over again. He said, I just told the person that if I got the story right. I just told the person, no, I've already applied for it and I've already taken the test. I've done everything I was supposed to do. I, this job's mine. He's saying this by faith. So, Brother Rich, what do you what do you think? <laughs> I thought it's pretty good. You know, it's, you know, you're telling people like that, that. And sure enough, they called him. Now, he wasn't in the answer. He's not going to get this job. It's going to be given someone that's got political connections. Well, thank God we have connections, right? Well, thank God for political corrections, but connections, but we got the, the greater one inside of us. It's called favor of the God man. Now, here he is. This is like the first thing, as far as I know, he really believed God for a big, you know, something that meant a lot to him. And thank God for that. Now, what did he do? He released his faith and he got it in Jesus' name. Well, what do we do as believers? Well, we find out what God's word says. Get that settled inside of our heart. And promise is going to do that. And spend the time every day praying the spirit. It just, it's important, you know, to just put time praying to because what does that do? That gets us reassurance. It builds up a confidence inside of us, a reassurance. You'll notice the difference. The more you pray in the Spirit, the more confidence you're going to have. And you can tell when you haven't been praying in the Spirit, you kind of lost your confidence. No, go back to praying in the Spirit, praying in the tongue, keeping yourself built up. And the more time you put in that, the more you're going to get built up, you're going to get more, you're going to get edified and you're more effective. You're going to be at to minister to other people. We want to start our day every, every day, start our life out in God's word with God. And that's going to take some time every day, not just a few seconds or a few minutes. No, some significant time. That means we may have to get up a little extra, extra earlier. And of course, flesh isn't going to want to do that. But a long time, as, this, as we keep developing these habits of being consistent and constant with God's word, our flesh can be glad we did this because this still be around. What we want to do as believers is always have time with God every morning. And throughout the day, of course, what do you mean time with God? Well, reading our Bible, going through, uh, reading healing scriptures, promises, you know, I keep them with me. I just keep them on sheets of paper and I pull them out. If I'm someplace, especially if I'm somewhere and waiting, I'll just pull out my scripture sheet and read this to myself. Reminding me, this is what God's promised. Me. But starting the day out in God's word. And praising God and spending time praying in tongues and thinking, meditating on the word, taking a scripture and just keep reciting it to yourself underneath your breath. And by doing so, you get yourself built up. And just by develop a habit of that. 
See, so, so often people depend on just going to church is going to be enough. It's not. And I'm a pastor. I can say this. Going to church is not going to be enough. And thank God for going to church. We're supposed to go to church. But that doesn't take the place of us daily putting time with God. Now, what's it going to help? It's going to build confidence inside of us. You're just going to get, be able to face the whole day uh, much more successful by putting God first. And all of us would say amen to that. But no, we need to put it in practice. We need to make ourselves make sure we do it. There's nothing more important. This is the difference between Mary and Martha. Mary sat down to put the word first. She's going to listen to what Jesus got to say. And she's going to have a different kind of life than Martha's going to have. Martha's, she, Martha hadn't caught on yet. Martha's, you know, she's into hospitality and so important to her. She fusses around, gets all this food cooked and does all this. Well, she's got Jesus sitting in her living room. Now this, you know, then th this is a one-time deal. We have the word of God. We have a Bible so we can go to it every day. But she, she's not catching on to this. And she's all concerned about the problems she's got. And she's causing problems herself. And that's what happens when a, a believer, someone's born again, doesn't really take the time to put in God's word. Everybody's going to have problems. But the person is going to be much more successful to put God's word first. They'll be able to pass the trial and the test. Jesus taught us, you know, a, a foolish man, he hears the word, doesn't do anything with it. A wise man, he, does, he hears the word, he puts it in action. He builds his house on God's word. It takes time to build our life on God's word and maintain it the rest of our life. That's why it's so important that every day in the morning, we start out with God. Praying in the spirit. I mean, if it's nice weather, you could be walk, walk around outside, praying in tongues. Thank God we can do things like this. And by doing this, I noticed when I had a floor covering job, I'd be much more able to handle all the problems because the problems are going to come every day. Either I'm going to get in the flesh over this and get upset over something, or it's I'm going to know inside my spirit this is going to be taken care of. Now, I'd watch Jesse. If I kept him praying in the spirit and reading the scriptures every day, then I, I noticed that I'd come through these situations. Somehow, God would get it through. I don't even know how, but he worked a lot. But if I didn't do this and didn't maintain this, then I'd get all aggravated and wonder why this is going on and upset about this and upset about that. It's not working out. So I begin to realize, you know what? Now, the t when I put God first, these things seem to get worked out. But when I don't, I get, well, I can run out the door. I got to get to work. I got to do this. I got to do this. It, it doesn't work out right. I proved it out myself. And you'll notice that even in the ministry, it's, oh, it's so important to each one. And we'd all say amen to this, you know, if we heard someone preach this. But no, it's important that we practice it. I, 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 so, I noticed with myself, see, I, I, with a secular job even, that, okay, now I've been, you know, I haven't been putting a word first. I've been spending my time in prayer with God like I usually do. And why? It's causing, it, problems aren't working out. They're just not going away. But as I pray in tongues, you know, this, over here in, in Romans chapter 8, let's go here in Romans chapter 8. Verse 26 through verse 20. Likewise, the Spirit also help with our infirmities, for we know not what to pray for as we ought. See, we, we don't know. We don't even know what's going on. Now, we know how to pray. We pray to God in Jesus' name. But if we'll pray in tongues, it's going to go on. Everything in this verse 28 says everything's going to work out for our good. And you know, so you laugh that as you put God's word first place and really stay constant, consistent every day, making ourselves do this. This is more important than anything else. As, as, more, as important as everything else is that we're doing, this is more important. And we just know we, we do much more be better when we put time with God every day. We just know that, you know what? We have more confidence, more peace in our heart, more joy in our heart as we're doing this. Let's keep being constant and consistent with God's word. Amen. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We're so thankful, Lord that you saved us, you delivered us, you gave us everlasting, abundant, eternal life in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you received Jesus Christ, your Lord? Maybe you're not sure. I know what that's like. Or you know you've never done it. God wants you to receive his son today. Today is the day of salvation. I'm going to read these scripts from Romans chapter 10. Then I'm going to ask you a prayer, prayer with me to receive Jesus. Do this today so you just know that you, you received Jesus Christ, your Lord. The Bible says here in Romans chapter 10, now verse 9, verse 10, and verse 13, that if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shall believe in the heart God has raised dead, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart man believes the righteous, with the mouth confession means salvation. Now verse 13 says, For whosoever calls on them the Lord shall be saved. It's confessing Jesus Christ and meaning it from a heart. And taking that time to receive Jesus in our heart. Today, you can always remember today's the day you did it. And jot down that date that you received Jesus Christ, your Lord. Pray this to me, please. Mean it from your heart. Say this with your mouth. Loud enough, least that you hear your mouth said. God, I come to you today 
to receive Jesus Christ, my Lord. I believe in my heart and I confess in my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe Jesus crucified, took my sins on the cross, took my judgment of sin, died, was buried, and God, you raised him dead. And he's alive today. Jesus, I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me eternal, everlasting life. And thank you, Jesus, because you're my Lord. I'll never go to hell. In Jesus' name, amen. You prayed that prayer? Good for you. Congratulations. I'd like to hear from you. If you, if you could or like to, you could email me at jessierittsministries.com. Or if you want to write me, you can write me. And, uh, you know, take advantage of our, we have, uh, what is it called? Conference call tonight at 7 o'clock. Call a church on the phone. Call in. Call a little bit early. Fellowship of the Saints. The phone number and access code should be right on our Facebook page. I want to encourage you, if you, if you just received the Lord, get a Bible, a physical Bible, and start reading the Gospel of John. Find a church to go to. That church is going to help you grow and develop spirits. A church that believes Jesus is the only way to heaven. That's the most important. Every church is a little different. Some are more different than others. But start growing and developing spirit. Help that church out. Help that pastor out, that ministry out that you're, that's helping you grow in God's word. Keep tithing and give and be a blessing to them. Till next time, it's Brother Rich Maya. I love you. I'm praying for you. Remember, Jesus is always more than enough. <laughs>